Elon was tweeting about his master plan last night and added a little bit of a bombshell in a follow-up tweet mentioning that, by the way, even though I said we would launch the Tesla Semi earlier, yeah, that's actually gonna be shipping this year and the Cybertruck's gonna be shipping next year. And not only that, he said the 500 mile range Tesla Semi would be shipping this year. So he's even doubling down on the range spec on top of the timeline, which is a lot because we've heard nothing basically about the Tesla Semi for months and months, probably close to a year year now, and I'm trying not to get too excited about this because I'm a big fan of the Tesla Semi, as you can tell. I love the concept of clean, safer, electric pickup trucks that are hauling lots and lots of payload, and I also just think that diesel semi trucks are incredibly dangerous and they cause a lot of emissions, but we need them for our economy and a lot of our infrastructure to work, so I'm excited for any and all Tesla Semi updates, but I had kind of given up on the idea that we were going to see these anytime soon because Tesla had such a large demand backlog. It just made so much more sense to put those battery cells available into crossovers and sedans because those vehicles are very high in demand and much more profitable because they don't need as many crazy batteries. But now the Techno King himself is dropping some news on us and I'm still kind of unconvinced if he intentionally was trying to drop this news. It feels like the kind of thing that you would want to announce at the shareholder meeting like, hey, by the way, we're making great progress on the Tesla Semi and we expect to start shipping that later this year. So I have a few theories and if you don't like speculation, you might as well just leave this channel and don't subscribe because there's a lot of speculation that goes on here That's what I enjoy the most in this sector But I have a few theories on how the Tesla semi launching this year could be possible And perhaps why Elon didn't want to talk about it during an official event and decided to save that announcement And decided to announce it through Twitter replies Which is where he normally announces so many of his electric truck updates that we cover here on the channel So another reason I was partly confused was at the start of this year they had an earnings call and they said that if we introduce any new models, we will deliver less vehicles. So that's what kind of killed all hope of the Roadster, the Cybertruck, or the Semi launching this year for me because Tesla literally started out 2022 by saying, yeah, no new options of Teslas are launching this year. It's just about ramping up production. So what could have possibly changed? I have a few theories. For one, it seems like the 4680 ramp is taking a little bit longer than they expected and maybe the quality of the cells or the yields of them are not quite as good as we thought because Tesla still has never quite launched the 4680 Model Y. They offered it as an accelerated delivery option to a lot of customers, but even those have gone kind of quiet. You notice there's not too many people in the month of August or even that much in the month of July that are taking delivery of 4680 Model Ys. And if you listen to the last earnings call when talking about Giga Texas, Elon doubled down and basically the way he worded it made me feel like Giga Texas is probably only building 2170 cell Model Ys right now. Give it a listen. So our, our Giga Texas to which it took exceed a thousand vehicle per week milestone in hopefully in the next few months. To be clear, we're currently making the cars with the uh, 2170 uh, cells. Uh, Drew Baglino will address uh, some of the 4680 questions uh, later in this call. It is worth emphasizing that we have enough 2170 cells to, uh, to satisfy uh, all vehicle production for the remainder of the year. So we're not dependent on 4680. 4680 will be important next year, but it is not important this year. Uh, that said, we have installed the second generation of manufacturing equipment for 4680 cells in Texas. And even at our established factories like Fremont and Shanghai, we continue to expand capacity. So he kind of assures everyone that we have enough 2170 cells to scale up production for Berlin and for Texas. And my theory is that to save on cost and shipping components, they are no longer shipping 4680 batteries from the Cato Road facility in California all the way to Giga Texas. That takes quite a long time. And they're probably just going to hold off on 4680 Model Y production until they can build those cells locally at the factory because that's obviously going to be much much cheaper and the 2170 Model Y is tried and true so I'm not sure where those cells are coming from whether it's Giga Nevada or they're being shipped in from China but there's a giant demand backlog for those 2170 Model Ys so Texas catching up on those orders rather than introducing a new Model Y at a lower price that would likely also have a big backlog no they're just focusing on the most in-demand Model Y that's what Texas is building and until the local 4680 battery production at Texas is up and running. I think they just want to continue building long range model wise. And they did mention that all of the next generation 4680 cell equipment has been installed at Giga Texas and they're kind of testing the battery line right now trying to get it up to a good yield and at a high rate. But at the same time, even if you get 4680 cells being built there and they said their goal is for Texas to start building more 4680 batteries than Cato Road by the end of this year, you still have a very high production, fairly effective 
active battery facility at Cato Road in California that's going to be building 4680 batteries and Drew Baglino mentioned that basically every month that goes by they're building around 30% more batteries than they were the month before so there should be at least a couple million 4680 cells coming out of Cato Road these days where are those batteries going do they want to ship them to Germany you know Germany as far as we know isn't mass producing 4680 model Y's right now because they're waiting until they can start up 4680 battery production locally they have a whole separate facility for that right now as far as we're aware Giga Berlin is just using 2170 cells shipped from China which is likely a lot cheaper and they're ramping up pretty fast and like Elon said they have enough 2170 cells to meet their targets for the end of the year so 4680 in this year's production is not that crucial Elon said that 4680 will be more important next year not so much this year so talking about all of those different logistics of cells and what vehicles are using what here's my pitch here's why I think there's a chance that the Tesla semi could launch this year likely at fairly limited volumes is because just like we've heard rumors about there being a pilot line at Giga Nevada for the Tesla semi maybe they're bringing those excess 4680 batteries from Cato Road up to the Panasonic facility in Nevada which is not terribly far from Fremont plus you've already got a bunch of semi trucks that are shipping 2170 batteries from Giga Nevada to Fremont and then those trucks got to go back so if they're going back they might as well take some 4680 batteries with them and kind of start limited production of the Tesla semi and if you've been following the Tesla semi on subreddits like I have you'll know that there's actually been an uptick in sightings there's been a few more prototypes than usual there was a couple of reports of people spotting them around the Modesto area and seeing not just one not just two three and I swear I saw someone say they saw four or five but I have a hard time finding the link for it but we even saw an updated Tesla semi prototype show up to the shareholder meeting which I don't think they built that thing in Texas so they had to drive that thing with the trailer on the back with some cool artwork all the way out to Texas and we're still having sightings in the California area so I personally think that they are thinking about kind of doing a limited production run at the Giga Nevada facility which has some additional space and I don't necessarily think this means they're gonna build like 200 or 500 Tesla semis per month but you know just to kind of prove to people that they are working on the project and I think it would work as a great proof of concept for all of the doubters out there that are convinced there's no way the Tesla semi could work and I always see them in the comments of these videos because there's just a giant cult of people that love watching content on the Tesla semi telling everyone that the, oh the weight won't work the payload is too low it's just never gonna happen the energy density of batteries it just doesn't work first of all tesla doubled down in their impact report that the tesla semi would have payloads equal to that of diesel semi trucks so if you think tesla's just lying that, that's a completely different discussion but this was a public document that they disclosed and they feel confident in the payload being the same as diesel and even if it's not the same you also got to keep in mind that a lot of the time giant semi trucks are not limited by their max payload capacity they're limited volumetrically which is likely why the Frito-Lays facility in Modesto is so excited to start using Tesla semis. They got like the first public mega charger installed and we've seen some testing going around at that mega charger. You know, Frito-Lay is moving around bags of air with a couple of chips inside those bags. They are not moving trucks at max payload capacity. They are basically limited by how many bags of air they can fit into a standard semi trailer and they're interested in the semi because of its vastly lower cost of ownership. Electrons and charging up those batteries are always going to be much much cheaper than the cost of diesel not to mention brake pad replacements not to mention oil changes not to mention transmissions going bad or even the glass and windshields being too fragile which the tesla semi is supposed to have armored glass which should be far more durable and these semi trucks can utilize regenerative braking which diesel semis cannot so there's all these advantages by going electric and i think that's why there's a ton of orders for tesla semis there's certainly no demand problem but the concept of them saying okay let's maybe just build a few dozen of these trucks every month and we start delivering them in limited volume to a few of our clients I think that would send a big message of like yeah we are still interested in the semi you know it's hard to ramp it up at extreme scale but we can at least let people know and customers know that the product works you can fit enough batteries in a truck for it to go 500 miles at a full payload and you can recharge it at the distribution centers that it's being loaded up on in a quick manner and in a previous earnings call they even were asked about the 800 volt architecture you know, this whole dilemma so many people have with the semis that even though Tesla hasn't disclosed the curb weight, everyone just assumes it's far too heavy because batteries are heavy and that means the semi is heavy. Therefore, it can't have a good payload. But ultimately, the number of batteries you use is all going to be dependent on efficiency. And 
Tesla makes some of the most efficient vehicles in the world or on the market right now because they develop their own powertrains in-house. So I think the quad motor powertrain they put in the semi, they're going to design to be fairly lightweight and fairly efficient and perhaps use a new 800 volt architecture, which Elon said that they were looking into for larger size vehicles like the Cybertruck in the semi when people were asking like, hey, Lucid's getting a lot of good efficiency and range when you get 800 volts. And they mentioned that, well, it doesn't really help that much for a Model 3 or a Model Y or even a Model S or X, but it might help a lot with the Tesla Semi and the Cybertruck. So having an 800 volt architecture means better efficiency and you could save a lot on weight. Therefore, you don't need as crazy many batteries as you may think. It's still a semi truck at the end of the day, but when they first unveiled it, they did mention that it was going to consume less than two kilowatt hours per mile. So if they're still targeting that 500 mile range, which Elon says they are, that would assume that they may require battery packs around 900 kilowatt hours, perhaps a little bit less. Plus, there's a lot of structural battery pack techniques that Tesla has learned since launching the semi with single piece castings and looking for ways to reduce weight. So it might be a great pilot line to figure out the kinks in the assembly and figure out how to build these trucks at a lower scale so that once they move semi production to Giga Texas or who knows, maybe Tulsa, Oklahoma or something. I'm just not sure where in the factory they could build the semi. Maybe they have to build a whole separate building, but in the future they can take what they've learned from the semi pilot line and help scale up the semi to something like 50,000 units a year. That's probably its max capacity, but it's going to be a while until they have enough cells to actually build that many trucks, but if you have that Cato Road facility and it's building several million cells per month, why not put those in the semi, which can be built very close by instead of trying to ship them to Texas because Texas can build their own battery or ship them to Berlin because Berlin can build their own batteries. I just see a little bit of vacancy in those 4680 cells. Maybe from a financial point of view, it might make more sense to put those batteries in like a Tesla Roadster and start delivering the Roadster to all the YouTubers that keep complaining about it. But heck, I'm not planning on buying a semi or a Roadster. So if they choose the Roadster over the semi, in my view, that's still a win. That means more diesel semi trucks getting off the road. And even if there's more testing they want to do with it, Tesla has to use a lot of semi trucks themselves for moving around cars to delivery centers and moving parts in and out of the factories, moving batteries. So even if they don't want to deliver the Tesla Semi to customers because they don't feel like putting mega chargers everywhere, they could easily just start building up a few dozen Tesla Semis per month to use for their own purposes and they could save a lot of money that way. Just like it seemed like they're already using prototype Tesla Semis to deliver superchargers to Laguna Seca, which was pretty awesome. So I'm excited for any and all Tesla Semi updates, especially if they start actually actually delivering them to their paying customers, given they had to put down $20,000 deposits. I hope that locked in their price. In case you forgot, the 500 mile range Tesla Semi is supposed to be 180 grand. So no, I don't think that would be profitable with a 900 kilowatt hour battery pack, but Tesla is so profitable in their other regions anyway, that delivering a few dozen Tesla Semis that are losing a bit of money on each sale probably isn't gonna hurt them ultimately. And I think it would do wild things for the public perception of the company because there certainly is a lot of people doubting like, hey, you said the Tesla Semi would be out in 2019. They're so late. Elon's a fraud. They haven't figured this out. If they could start addressing some of that FUD with the launch of the Tesla Semi, even if it's not at high volume, I think that would be awesome. And I very well just could be seeing through lines and maybe Elon spoke too soon because this feels like the type of thing that got slipped through the cracks and Elon was not supposed to say. And there's absolutely still a chance that he didn't know what he was talking about and the Tesla Semi doesn't launch this year, but I'm still excited for it. What do you guys think of my theories? Do you think it makes any sort of sense or do you think there's no chance of the Tesla Semi launching this year? All that good stuff. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below and thank you to everyone on Patreon supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos. So thanks again and have an excellent rest of your day.